Dr. Rashid, please unmute. Yes, Dr. Muhammad. Good morning, all. Sir, can you hear me? I am honored to in introduce you, my sir, my teacher, Dr. T. V. Padmanabhan, Padu sir, as we all call him, has been an inspiration personally for me to opt prosthodontics. I am privileged to have done my undergraduation under his guidance. He is one with immense knowledge ta and talent. His way of sharing ideology is a boon to for, for one and all who are getting guided under him. TV Padmanabhan, prosthodontist, graduated from Madras Dental College in 1984 and completed his master's from same college in 1988. He is a diplomat of International Congress of Implantology, travel across the globe, to learn and lecture prosthodontics. He has been in teaching from 1988 till 2016, and his last assignment was with Sri Ramchandra University, Chennai, India, as the HOD of prosthodontics. He has about 80 publications in peer review journals and also co authored a textbook and contributed chapters in few books. He is presently the chairman of Indian Board of Prosthodontics. He was the past president of Indian Prosthodontic Society, Asian Academy of Prosthodontics, executive member of Asian Academy of Osu Integration, a keen clinic, clinical researcher working on improvement of quality of life and treatment outcome assessment, a good teacher, motivator, mentor, father, friend, gentleman, and a good human being. And he's married to Dr. Sridevi Padmanabhan, who is an orthodontist. Welcome you, sir. Over to you. And here, sir. You are not audible. One minute. Yeah. Now it's clear. Now it's clear. Yeah. Okay. 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 So they have unmuted me. So yeah. you should be all right now. Okay. So thank you, uh, Mohammed, for uh, giving a great introduction about myself. Thank you very much. You've been such a nice guy. And, then, um, and uh, I'm very, very proud to be uh, called as a teacher of yours because you're now very well internationally known. And then your, 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 your clinical work, uh, very truly, very truly. Now, it is, it is uh, not a good habit of a teacher to just quietly appreciate in person if there is an audience for my appreciation, I think I'll be the happiest person. So nice of you, Mohammed. Thank you, sir. So nice. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. And uh, my respects to all the members of this IDA branch and um, uh, my namaskarams to all of you. Uh, I would like to uh, start my presentation straight away. Is it possible for me to just go to the share screen and then start? Yeah. Yes, okay. Oops. Um. I'm not able to go to the share screen. How to go to share screen, please? Rashid. Yes, uh, sir, one suggestion. Oh, yeah. part, oh, I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. Uh, so we need some light on your face. This is my color, man. What can I do about it? <laughs> Colorless, sir. <laughs> Suddenly, if you want me to become like Kamal Asan, how is it possible? Not possible, please. <laughs> <simply. laughs> Light, light. Yeah, for that. Hey, how are you, Mrs. Mohammed? Doing fine? Hi, sir. Hi, hi. Hi, Dad. Hi, hi Dad. How are you doing? So nice to see you after so many fine, years. Fine. So happy to see you, my fine, dear. So happy you, to see you, my dear. So happy. So, as usual, I bring warm greetings from Chennai. And today I'm going to talk to you for about an hour's time, perhaps, on uh, 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 basic uh, clinical prosthodontics. Basic clinical prosthodontics. I'm basically a clinical a clinician with a little bit of uh, academic uh, orientation 
and uh, I, I'm, I'm, I've, I've involved a lot of uh, uh, techniques which are more useful for the clinician and uh, I am basically, I, I work on a lot of patients and uh, incorporate little knowledge that I have on all these patients. So not very often, not very often, uh, we come across situations where there will be very, very ideal edentulous spaces, very ideal edentulous spaces, and the rest of the teeth are absolutely all right, and uh, not much of problems. But it is quite easy for us to treat most of this or coming under a general purview of uh, a clinical prosthodontics where your formula or the treatment plan is almost universal. If a case like this comes to me or you, we can always plan for a nice implant supported prosthesis. I can do it, you can do it, everybody can do it. But the decision making in most of these situations, straightforward cases are very, very simple. And in my clinical practice, very often, I have the third choice of treatment apart from fixed and removable. No treatment is also one of my very, very strong choices of treatment. I normally do no treatment for a long, lot of patients because I know very well the cost of regret that I'm going to face after five or seven years from the same patient, seeing the same patient is much, much more than doing a treatment. So I normally also think of no treatment as one of the options of the treatment. So there is no problem in treating because this has got a universal solution for uh, you as well as me, and then both of us will be able to create a good clinical situation where we will be able to get good results. But cases like this, when we come across cases like this, so what is the plan? What is the plan? Normally, what could be the plan is if, it is, if the patient, if the if the clinician is going to be an elderly clinician, say about 70, 75 years old clinician, he would prefer to remove all the teeth. Or if he's going to be a uh, uh, you know, less uh, conservative uh, dentist, he would prefer removal of all the teeth. So if you're going to have a look at this particular case, what are all the findings that you're able to see? The findings that I'm able to see is there is absolute collapse of vertical dimension. There is no posterior occlusal contact points. That means vertical dimension, you, there is no way by which we will be able to assess the vertical dimension as such. So the upper teeth are touching the lower ridge and the lower teeth are touching the upper ridge to regain. Now, what could be the uh, end result of this? The end result of this is going to be a pseudo class three, a pseudo class three or a class one, which has been converted into a class three because of no contact of the posterior teeth. And you see a lot of broken down teeth. So what will be the treatment choice for all these kind of patients? Because as I told you, if it is a straightforward case, you will always say, okay, give an RPD, give an implant supported. But this requires a multi-specialty treatment planning with a lot of conservative attitude because I always believe none of our treatment lasts. I always believe none of our treatment lasts. And most of the treatment that we are trying to do is only trying to postpone the inevitable end of the tooth that is extractions. If I'm going to work on a patient who is about 20 years old, my treatment may last for next about 25 to 30 years time. The whole treatment approach is not the same for all age group. What I'm doing for a 20 year old man is not the same like what I'm going to be doing for a 60 year old man because the deterioration, repair, regeneration is going to be totally different. So a case like this, if this is going to come, what is the first thing that you normally do? Normally what we do is extract all the teeth and then start out with a complete denture construction. And in my opinion, that's the worst possible treatment that one can possibly think of. Whenever you have few remaining good teeth or even carious teeth, you always try to Think whether you like to sacrifice all the teeth or salvage all the teeth. In my opinion, I would always like to salvage. Salvage as many teeth as possible because in one way or other, you are going to totally postpone a patient who is a normal individual 
to a dentally crippled individual. Dental crippleness is total eventlessness. The patient will never be able to, you know, yeah, uh, uh, when there is no contact of teeth, when there is no contact of teeth, uh, there, there are lots of problems, not only mechanical, not only, uh, uh, you know, like inability to eat and speak and things like that. There are a lot of other psychological problems. There are a lot of literature to say that there is reduced hearing, there is reduced co cognitive function, you will never be able to walk in a straight line. The, the, the balance is going to be lost. So loss of teeth is going to be a very, 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 very costly and a very deleterious, extremely dangerous disease in terms of a dentist. So in my opinion, as long as you do not make a dentally crippled individual by totally removing the tooth, you are the most conservative dentist. So I'm going to be talking today on tooth supported overdentures. Where to indicate what? That's very important. Wherever there are teeth, can no, I me, can I put an attachment? Hello? No, Am I okay? Uh, screen not shared yet. Sir? Screen not shared it. Not shared. Screen not shared, is it? Uh, I thought it is it is there. Screen share. I am able to see no, that. No, no, not showing. Is it okay now? Not okay. Not okay now. Not okay now. So what do I do? One minute. Chalama. The screen is not seen on W. Help me. Screen is not seen. It's seen. That's what they say. I'm on Zoom. Is it? I'm on Zoom. Join in. Where is the presentation? Webinar 3. Okay, then. Sir, is it okay now? Okay, now. Okay, right. No. What do you do? What happened? It's not shared. Sir, is it okay now? Uh, okay, now. Right. So I'm going to be talking. So all these times you are not able to see any slide, is it? You want uh, me to start not from able to see any slide? Any slide we, we don't see. You want to start from the beginning? Yes, yes. All right. Meeting upgrade to the host will also include unlimited menu. All right, fine. So I was telling that these kind of cases where you have straightforward edentulous situations, like a single tooth, a couple of teeth, or multiple teeth missing, either a class one or a class two situation or a class three situation with modifications or a total edentulousness, all these patients, everybody will be able to treat in this almost in the same way. But the only thing that we are bothered is about this particular case or this kind of cases where few number of teeth in maxilla and mandible are present, what will be the first choice of treatment? Under normal circumstances, our first choice of, choice of treatment for this will be to go in for a total extraction, going for a complete removal prosthesis. If, we, uh, if the patient, if the, if the operator is not well versed with implants, Otherwise, he, they will either think in terms of an implant-supported prosthesis or implant-retained prosthesis, depending upon the economical status of the. So what is the problem in this? The problem in this is there is no posterior occlusal limiting factors. That means there is no vertical stop. If there is no vertical stop, there is going to be a collapse of the vertical dimension. If there's going to be a collapse of the vertical dimension, what could happen is a normal class one will convert itself into a, no, a class three situation. You cannot class this, a, class this a, a, call this a class three or a pseudo class three situation. Basically, it's a class one, but it has been converted over a period of time because of loss of posteriority. So what will be the choice? The choice either to go for removal of all the teeth and go for a complete denture or salvage. That was the question that we were talking about. So I would always, I would always, always prefer to salvage as many teeth as possible in the oral cavity because at some stage of life, those teeth will come handy. 
it is need not have to be essentially uh, the tooth. It can also be the remnant of the tooth in the form of a root, which is subcrestally <clears throat> present by about say 10 millimeters, 11 millimeters. All these will be very, very useful for the prosthesis because in my opinion, all the prosthesis that ins we insert, all the restoration that, that we do inside the oral cavity has got a limited period of service after which they either fail, they deteriorate, they go in for a more disease. So in my opinion, whatever that we do in the oral cavity is only postponement of the inevitable sequelae, namely the extraction. <clears throat> so whatever that you're doing is to aim so that the service of the restoration or the service of the prosthesis is going to be prolonged as long as possible so that you are able to give a better service and better quality of life to the patient. So I'm going to be talking today about the tooth supported overdentures. Sir, am I clear in this? Can I proceed? All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I'm not going to be talking about implant supported overdentures. I'm going to take some concepts from them, but I'm going to give you a detailed version of what is tooth supported overdentures what is the need for us to preserve as many teeth as possible? Fine. So a tooth supported prosthesis or a tooth supported overdenture is normally a tooth is rotated on which an attachment is given or a, a dome is given over which a denture is placed. What is the advantage and disadvantage? And we will be talking about it. By definition, it is a prosthesis that covers partially or totally the natural teeth or the roots or the dental implants. It is. It covers the. And it is. It is going to be retained, or it is going to be supported. So I'm, I want you to understand the terminologies, namely the re retain and support. So these are the terminologies which we normally use in these situations. So I would like you to remember these terminologies as and when we go. So what is the advantage of retaining the teeth? It preserves the neuromuscular function. So it preserves the proprioception. It preserves the perceptive ability. What do you mean by perceptive ability? What do you mean by proprioception? What do you mean by neuromuscular function? What is the greatest difficulty in, uh, in, in a completely identical situation? The, the treatment uh, involves finding out the centric relation. It is going to be extremely difficult in a totally identical situation because they don't have a neuromuscular coordination. But if you're going to have teeth, it is going to help in better neuromuscular function. And what do you mean by proprioception and perceptive ability? The perceptive ability is a simple example. You know, like you are going to be having a sadhya. What do you have in sadhya? You have different kinds and different textures of food. Rice is there, sambar is there, chips is there, kutan is there, everything is there, and everything will have different, different kind of texture and consistency. For all that, you don't do only one movement. You, for different kinds of food, for you use a different kind of force, different amount of force, different duration of force. It is not only just three-dimensional, it is also the fourth dimension, namely the time. Say, for example, you have a peanut candy, you bite on it. The purpose of biting is only to cut that peanut candy into two halves. It is not going to be a full closure. It's just going to bite, it breaks into two, and but at that you stop closing the jaw. So all these things will come under proprioception and perceptive ability. The amount of force, direction of the force, and the duration of the force is also taken into consideration. If you have teeth, you will be able to maintain the forces. That means undue force is not going to be generated on the residual reach. That means what? maintenance of the residual reach, maintenance of the denture and the occlusive. <clears throat> and uh, you, uh, the, the most important thing is it is a reversible treatment planning. You don't have to do it once and then forget about the whole thing. What is the disadvantage? It is a little more expensive than the conventional company dentures and it is a little bulkier. The patient has to get used to it. Effective plaque control is absolutely there. I mean, it, 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 you have to make a little bit of effort to a good do a good brushing because it's a, well it's going to be a small attachment and in cases where there is going to be a reduced vertical dimension there will be insufficient space for the artificial teeth 
So these are the disadvantages that has to be taken into consideration when you're planning. I will tell you as we go as to where, what is to be planned. The indications, few remaining teeth with unfavorable distribution, severe loss of periodontal attachment, significant posterior loss associated with attrition of the anterior when the prognosis of cast partial denture and the complete denture is poor. <clears throat> okay, now how will you find out the prognosis of a complete denture? Simple, you go back to your uh, classification of the edentulous ridges. When you classify the edentulous ridges, you divide it into three parts, namely the anterior, two posteriors, anterior and two posteriors. And depending upon the bone available, whether it is abundant, adequate or inadequate, you come up to a diagnosis or a prognosis whether it is going to be favorable or unfavorable. So likewise, depending upon the number of teeth, you will plan whether the prognosis is going to be <clears throat> of the removal partial denture is going to be favorable or unfavorable. But if you have few teeth remaining and if they are periodontally sound, and there is not much of decay of the particular tooth, or even if it is going to be decay, if the tooth, the remaining tooth structure is sound, it's an absolute good indication for an overdenture postponing, uh, uh, making the patient dentally crippled. What is the contraindication when they cannot maintain the abutment? There are lots of contraindication for um, implant-supported prosthesis, especially the, the systemic factors involved in the implant-supported prosthesis. All these things are not taken into consideration in tooth support because it is a natural tooth, it is a patient's own natural tooth. The possibility of increasing the longevity of service of the natural tooth is much, much more higher than the implant. I mean, implant is always there. We can always do this treatment after about five years' time also. You are reducing the amount of time the patient is going to be without the teeth. That's most, most important. And as many teeth in the mouth is absolutely good for the patient's health as well as the prosthesis. How do you select the abutment? Bilateral distribution is the most ideal thing. Say, for example, I have two canines. That will be the very, very ideal situation. But if I don't have two canines, say I have a canine and a premolar and I have nothing on the side, can I still go ahead with the overdenture? Yes, you can go ahead with an overdenture. But what is the difficulty or what is the uh, prognosis or what is the uh, mechanical uh, disturbance the patient will feel, there is going to be a rock between right and left side because on the left side you have natural teeth, the support is very, very good, whereas on the right side it is supported by a resilient tissue, namely the residual ridge covered by a mucoperiose layer. There will be a plane. So in these situations, what will you do? In this situation, diagnosis makes a very, very important Role. If there is going to be only presence of unilateral teeth, you can always go in for a single implant on the opposite side. Most preferable is the anterior. Say you have a canine and a premolar, don't go in for a premolar implant, rather go in for a canine implant because the rotation is going to be only anterior, not going to be posterior. Though it is a tripodal configuration, uh, uh, you always choose a canine. So there is always a question how can you connect a prosthesis? which is uh, 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 an implant with, as, as well as a uh, natural tooth. It's okay. And it's, after all, a removable prosthesis. Rotational possibilities are there. So bilateral configuration or a bilateral distribution is very ideal, though you have only one particular side or unilateral can also be managed. And if the patient can afford, you can create a bilateral distribution by incorporating one implant. That means what? You have reduced the cost of the treatment by half. It should be possible. The total length of the tooth subcrestal should not be less than 9 millimeters. You have to make an IOPA with the gradations and make sure that it is at least about 9 millimeters. If it is less than 9 millimeters, can I remove the tooth? That's not a great idea. You can still work with the, uh, you know, like prefab. Uh, uh, Pose, as I, I, I'll, I'll show some examples, but you cannot promise the patient this denture is going to service him or this particular tooth will service him for the rest of his life or for the next about eight years time. Maybe the, 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 the period of uh, the service is going to be much less. And not less than three millimeters of attaching is also very, very important. 
if there is going to be less than 3 million bitters, the free gingival margin will get affected very easily, resulting in faster parental deterioration of the teeth. 2 to 3 millimeters of abutment height above the gingiva, and no bony undercuts or very minimal bony undercuts. Whenever you have about 2 or 3 teeth, I'm sure the, uh, uh, the bone will have a huge undercut, especially on the labial surface. I will tell you how to manage this, but it is preferable if there is going to be a huge bony undercut, we can always trim it or remove that particular tooth or possibly have a prosthesis which does not involve the labial flange as the case may be. Minimal or no caries involvement. Even if there is going to be caries involvement, if the rest of the tooth structure is bony hard, it's going to be very useful. So unless if the tooth is very cheesy, do not try to remove the cheek. So what are the types of overdenture? The types of overdenture can be either it is tooth and tissue supported prosthesis or tooth supported prosthesis. What do you mean by tooth tissue prosthesis? In a tooth tissue prosthesis, you divide the labor between the teeth as well as the mucoperiosal residual ridge. In cases of a tooth supported, so obviously what is the most uh, favorable thing here, when you have more number of teeth, you can go for a tooth supported prosthesis. The prognosis of this will be much, much more greater. There will be no movement of the denture at all. If you have about six, seven teeth, which are, you know, like uh, the length of the tooth is much longer or supra erupted, you don't have an upper teeth. Instead of just removing all the teeth, you can make it into a shorter tooth. And then if you have about six or seven teeth, the, the, the support is going to be totally by the tooth. It is going to be like a removable bridge. The, the, the retention will be very good. Support will also be very, very good. On the contrary, if you just have about two teeth, it is going to be a tooth tissue supported prosthesis. The tooth is going to help in the retention, whereas tooth as well as the tissue will help in the distribution of the vertical load, namely the support. Right? So depending upon the number of teeth available, you either classify as a tooth tissue supported overdenture or a tooth supported part. And the prognosis is also going to be dependent on the amount of ridge available apart from the teeth. So you can have a poor ridge, you can have a moderate ridge, and you can have a well-formed ridge also. So depending upon the, uh, uh, the ridge formation, we will decide as to what is the kind of attachment that you can think of. So what is expected in a well-formed ridge with two or three teeth? You can either uh, expect retention only, or you want to go for a retention stability from the uh, overdentures, or you don't want to just have only retention stability, but you want to have the. So dependent, uh, you, there is a combination of the ridge as well as the number of teeth. If the number of teeth is less, say you have only two teeth, and the ridge is very poor, what can what can be expected? You have to expect. Retention, you have to expect stability, you have retention support also. So what can be done? To increase the support, you can increase the number of teeth by adding a few implants or alternatively, if you cannot do that, if you cannot do that, you have to check, you, you, you have to make a prosthesis where you get a good retention only. So depending upon whether the prosthesis requires more retention, more retention and stability, you choose your prosthesis. Say, for example, if you need to have a good retention only. Say, for example, I have two canines and there is a well-formed ridge as you can see in the picture. So what is that you are able to see? I'm able to get a good, the, 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 I'm able to construct a good complete denture and the, uh, the stability, namely the horizontal movement of the denture is very well restricted by the, 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 the slopes of the ridge. The only thing which is minus here, only thing which is lacking here is the retention. So what can I do? I can either use a ball or a magnet. So now you have to know where to use a magnet, where to use a ball. So if the retention alone is a problem, we can very comfortably use only the magnet. So I'm going to just show you an example of a magnet retained removable over denture. The patient is going to be using this particular denture for quite some time. And then, he, I mean, it's quite an old case of mine. So, magnets, why is it very, very comfortable? Because the magnets will help in retention only. But if you're going to slide, it can very comfortably slide. But we are not going to have any sliding movement because the ridge is well formed. It is going to protect. 
my anterior posterior movement. So what I need is only a retention. So magnets will do a great job. And number two is the, the length of service of the teeth are going to be really increased because there is going to be no lateral loading. Lateral loading is deleterious to both implants as well as the natural tooth. So no lateral loading, increased service of the length of service. So what is the uh, uh, schematic feature? This is what we do, uh, we we'll call it as a keeper. A keeper is cemented onto the remaining part of the tooth and the magnet is fixed in the oral cavity. Why not the opposite side? Is it good to have a magnet inside the oral cavity? Always, it is not a great idea to have a magnet always in the oral cavity. So normally, we keep a keeper in the, uh, uh, in the remnant of the tooth and a magnet which can be removed whenever it is possible. So what is the advantage? Whenever there is a lateral loading, the, the, the retentive forces are going to be the greatest, but if there is going to be a, a horizontal load, it can slide. Vertical load, rotational load will be very well resisted by the magnet. And these magnets are very well available in the market. As you can see in this, when there is going to be an oblique load or a vertical load, the, uh, the magnet is going to resist. Whereas when there is going to be a horizontal, it will give way. But we are only bothered about retention. So magnet is the ideal choice. It's supplied as a magnet and the keeper, which can be cast on the root. And, uh, you, this is the instructions for the wax up. So what is the greatest disadvantage? The greatest disadvantage is there is going to be a huge electromagnetic field, which is going to distort an MRI in case of there is going to be, uh, that is the reason why we always keep the magnet in the dentures, then so that they can remove the dentures while they make an MRI. But there is a lot of paper, there are lots of paper, as we say, there is a long term yield effects on the surrounding uh, tissues if you're going to keep the magnet in the oral cavity for a longer period of time. That could be the reason why it is not a very popular attachment. <laughs> so these are clinical cases where we have placed the two keepers in the maxilla, two keepers in the maxilla and two magnets in the dentures and a complete removable processes and then with just a single because of maxilla we were able to manage only the maxilla it is possible because you have a huge major connector rotational possibilities are going to be very, very less. And this is an attachment of the, 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 the a combination with a magnet as well as a telescopic removable dentist. So these are the magnetic distance. We Can we use this in uh, implant supported prosthesis? Yes, we can very comfortably use this. One of the very ideal situations where you need only retention also, you can think of this. This is a case where we just remove the teeth place the implants, place the magnet in the dentures immediately, fabricated earlier, <clears throat> and then this is how it looks immediately after the placement of. So immediate loading of removable processes is also possible with magnetic dentures. And this is four years followed with a very, very minimal amount of uh, bone loss. And this is how it looks, despite the fact that this patient is a barn chewer, he was able to manage very comfortably. And, uh, the greatest advantage of this is that we have placed the implant so that there is a bicartical engagement. So if you're going to have retention only, you need to have a good, well-formed ridge. And if you go, if you don't want to use magnet because of its non-availability, you can think in terms of using a ball. So using a ball is just two ball on the canine area. What is the primary idea of this? The primary idea of this. An imaginary line joining these two ball should be within the confines of the width. So what is the uh, uh, rationale? I will tell you as we go. So when I need retention stability also, so what do I do? Can I go for the same treatment? I have to think in terms of there are more number of teeth. I would prefer to have more number of teeth. I would like to have four teeth so that the stability, the anterior posterior movement, the right lateral, left lateral movement can also be uh, 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 managed. So what do I do in this particular case? If I have only two teeth, I go for a bar attachment. If I have four teeth, I'll go, I'll go for four ball. So now you understand where to go for four balls or where to go for a bar. You go for a bar when you have 
retention as well as stability problem with the prosthesis. Am I clear in this? Yeah. So what do I do? I go for a four implant prosthesis. This is just for example, I will show you some clinical cases. I, have to, I don't have clinical cases in the bar. I don't normally do bars for a tooth support or prosthesis. But I do more of ball. But I'm just telling you an example where bar can be indicated. Bar is indicated when you want to prevent the horizontal movement of the prosthesis. Either it is an overdenture or a partial overdenture, whatever it is, when you have two teeth which are non-favorable and the patient cannot afford to go for implants, you can connect them with the help of a bar and then go so that it is going to be helpful in the lateral or the horizontal movement also. So when you don't have retention, you have poor stability as well as also a poor support as in cases of severe residual rigid resorption cases, you think in terms of a combination of a ball or you go in for a telescopic removal. So normally in cases of an implant support process, you increase the number of implants when there is very minimal amount of bone. It is, it is, it is like this. When you have less bone, you increase the number of implants and then go for a bar, which will give you the lateral <coughs> uh, stabilization, anterior posterior stabilization, and give some ball which will help with retention and the increased number of uh, implants will also help in the, 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 the support. But can I do that in a, in a, in a tooth support overdenture? I can do that only when you have more number of teeth. I have more number of teeth in this particular situation, about five. And I'll be foolish if I have to remove the posterior teeth. If I have to remove the posterior teeth, use these two alone. What is going to happen? It is a good overdenture, no problem. But... Can I expect good support? I cannot. I'm going to utilize all the five teeth, which is going to enhance a good support. That means what? The load of the whole complete denture is going to be shared only by these five teeth. It's going to be controlled. Anterior posterior curve is going to be controlled. Vertical is going to be controlled. There's going to be a good retention also because they are telescopic. Scopic, they have parallel walls and the female of this is going to be incorporated in the denture which is also going to be metal the frictional resistance between these two is going to enhance a good amount of <clears throat> a, a, a good amount of retention so this is an ideal situation where you have more number of teeth periodontally support you think if they if they are all periodontally weak and if you're going to think that, yes, I'm going to do a periodontal therapy, I'm going to do a root canal treatment, stabilize the teeth, it is not going to be possible because by then the patient would have been dead. So it will take a long time for the periodontal support to gain. So you can do that only in cases of a younger patient, maybe around 55, 57 years old patient, where the periodontal support is good, tooth structure is also good, and unfortunately he has lost a, a few teeth because of caries. Normally, these cases do not come to you because of a periodontal problem. They would have removed the teeth primarily because of caries lesions. So you make sure that the secondary components are incorporated in the frame and you are able to see the huge undercut, huge undercut, uh, apical to the existing teeth. These are the areas which are extremely dangerous. You will never be able to cover with a flange. So normally, the denture stop shots with a metal to metal contact, it does not go beyond. I will show you some cases. So <clears throat> now, how will you have the distribution? How would you prefer to have the distribution? The distribution, as I told you earlier, is bilateral. If you don't have bilateral, and if you have only one tooth or one canine, you can still manage, fine, it is possible to manage in maxilla, but it is going to be difficult to manage in mandible. I would always prefer you to connect are going for only one implant because you are going to reduce the cost to a large extent. So number of abutments, two abutments on opposite side, <clears throat> say canine will give excellent attention. If more abutments are in it may complicate constructions. If you have instead of five, if you have about seven or eight, I would rather go in for a fixed partial denture rather than to go in for a removal or attachment retained removal cast partial denture rather than to go in for an over dentures. So anything beyond five or maximum six, it's going to be a huge headache. Headache. So number of abutments is going to be very, very important. You have to also make a decision whether to save or remove those teeth as the case may be. Say, for example, you have just two teeth here. It's a good preposition to 
maintain both and do a root canal treatment. The periodontal support is good. The tooth structure looks absolutely all right. There is no problem. Canine regions are strategic positions. With regard to lawyer, it is wise to select the teeth that can be joined in case. So as I told you, uh, uh, <clears throat> when there is any denture, it's going to rotate. So the rotation is going to be the line joining these two anterior abutments. So if you're able to, uh, 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 you know, like uh, make this line or the horizontal line joining, imaginary line joining these two abutments is within the width of the ridge, it is going to be very ideal. I will tell you why. Say, for example, I have a case on the right here. There are two canines. When it rotates, what will happen? The flanges will go inside or deeper into the vestibule. There will be no damage. Whereas, if this is going to be the case, one molar and a canine, when there is a rotation, there is going to be a huge amount of destruction of the alveolar ridge here, alveolar ridge here also. So, you, this is not a very great idea. The joining or diagonal horizontal line or the imaginary line or the fulcrum line, diagonal is not a great idea. It is always preferable to have. Instead of this, I would always prefer to go in for an implant here and make it into a triangular configuration rather than to just do a diagonal con uh, 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 a configuration like this. Not a great idea. I'm, so, I'm sure it's going to be, I I'm sure I'm clear on this. Ideal will be to, to have two canines and make sure the imaginary line is within the width of the crest of the ridge. Only then when it rotates, it will go into the vestibule. It will not injure the residual ridge. Amount of space between the abutment. If the abutment teeth are adjacent to each other, and there is going to be a very tight contact, it's going to be extremely difficult for the patient to maintain and also for the technician to fabricate. It, it is preferable that if you have about three teeth, canine premolar and premolar, I would like to remove four and keep the canine and number five, that's the second premolar, rather than to keep all the three teeth. Though I'll be showing you one case where I get all the three teeth also. So if you have a case like this, canine, canine and uh, uh, premolar, I would prefer to knock off this premolar if I have enough periodontal support. So all these things will depend upon periodontal support of the teeth. And if there are adjacent teeth, I would like not to complicate the design by incorporating these two unless I am going, okay, if I, if I feel that both are periodontally not very sound, and if I'm going to connect these two, I'll connect these two and have only one attachment rather than have two different attachments. Am I clear in this? Am I clear in this? I'll proceed with this. So this is a very classical case. If there are about two adjacent teeth, I'll make a single casting, single casting together and have only one attachment or even if I don't want to have an attachment, just have thimbles, just have thimbles, parallel walls, parallel walls, and I attach this to a single casting is preferable than two individual casting because these two individual casting is going to be extremely difficult to manage. And by splinting these two together, I'm increasing the length of service or life of these teeth. And what is that <clears throat> next important consideration is the endodontic consideration. I'm sure the endodontics have really evolved to such an extent that there is almost about 99.9% success rate. The most, most important thing is I would like to have a subcrestal tooth structure of at least about 9 millimeters. And after the preparation, uh, an apical seal of about 2 to 3 millimeters is absolutely preferable. I would always prefer to have a single rooted canal tooth with all, which is almost straight. If you are planning for a multi rooted hemisuction, these are all thyroid dentistry, which is okay for publication, which is okay for, you know, like one case presentation in a conference, but as a routine clinician, hemisuction and salvaging the teeth does not work in my hands at least. I must confess the fact that this does not work. Maybe it services for about one or two years time after that, it, it becomes very mobile. I'm not very happy with them. So sequence of the treatment will be emergency care, dental con uh, disease control, extraction of badly, transitional partial dentures, endodontics, periodontics, waiting period for the maturation. Don't be... Please wait for some time for the maturation of the periodontal surgery, a site, and also the endodontics, and then start constructing the overdentures. So what are the different types now? Bare roots. 
you don't have to essentially give a, you know, if you don't want to spend money, fine, doesn't matter at all. I can just smoothen the whole thing, increase the support to a large extent. And if you're going to increase the support, residual resorption is going to be very much reduced. If that is going to be reduced, retention, obviously the service is also going to be increased to a large extent. So how do I go about after the root canal treatment? I make the tooth into a dome shape, this thing. I use either a glass ionomer or an amalgam and then smoothen and make it highly polished. I can even apply a layer of varnish. And from now on, I just do a conventional implant, I mean, regular impressions and construction of the denture. What is the greatest advantage? The greatest advantage is that the residual rich resorption is going to be retarded or it is going to be almost stationary. It is not going, you are not going to come across. So retention, whatever that I'm going to give you on day one is going to be there on the day, I mean, three years or four years later also as long as the tooth is going to be sound. So it is simplest, cheapest, least space consuming. It is ideal during mass <coughs> maturation of the edentulous ridge. Can also be used to evaluate the questionable abutment. If you feel that this particular abutment is not nine millimeters subcrestal, it is only about six millimeter. I don't want to invest money on that particular tooth. You can use this as, uh, as, 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 uh, as, as an additional support in cases of an overdentures. Contraindication, it should not be used on long-term basis. Natural teeth are in direct opposition. The, the incidence of the longitudinal uh, fracture of the tooth is very, very high. It should not be used on long-term basis because, you know, like it will, it will certainly, it, you cannot use it for long-term also. It is not only contraindication, it is a disadvantage also. So metal coping. So what is the uh, 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 modification of this? If you don't want to use the copings, we also have ready-made attachments about which I will also talk about. So the copings, the metal copings are either dome-shaped or the thimble shaped. The dome-shaped or simple height of the preparation is usually about two millimeters. It normally comes in three different varieties, short copings, medium copings, and long copings. We never ever use medium copings at all. Medium copings ranging from four to six millimeters. Long copings is six to eight millimeters where short copings are normally it is zero to two millimeters. So we normally use only short domes or copings and we normally don't use only the copings. The copings will invariably have a radicular extension also. So you have to do a root canal preparation and you have, place, you have to prepare the radicular space for a casting also. But what is that we are going to gain out of this? We are not going to gain much. Preferably in all these cases, it is preferable to have an attachment which is going to enhance retention to a large extent. However, I will show you how to do a preparation for all these things. They are contributing retention of this very, very negligible. It's a chamfer finish line. Coping must be contoured to facilitate plug control. Coping should be what happens normally in this is when you're going to uh, uh, retain the canines. The instructions that I would like to give or share with you is move the labial surface as much as possible. If you're able to grind off almost about three or four millimeters of the labial surface, it is okay. Maintain the lingual because if you're going to leave the labial surface and make it as a parallel preparation, your, 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 your secondary coping as well as the teeth are going to look or it is going to come out of the arch. It's going to look really, really ugly. It's going to look like Lord Anumar, which is not going to be very well accepted by the patient. So whenever you are preparing the canines, Make sure you remove the labial surface fully by about four to five millimeters so that it does not protrude like this. It's going to be very, very ugly. So most important thing is to prepare the tooth, get a good finish line. Coping should be at least one millimeter thick because of the rounded form, the dentures will move horizontally. So we are, we are and most preferable, most often because it is a short uh, clinical crown, we have a radicular extension also. This is how after you do the preparation on the labial side, you're able to see there's a huge reduction on the labial surface because I need to give a metal, I need to give another metal, I have to give another acrylic also, and then a pink acrylic. The whole thing will look pumped out. It is not going to be. So labial reduction is very, very important. We extensively do a labial reduction. And this is the occlusal where we do a good radicular preparation for a, an extension into the post also. So this is how it is going to be. What is the precaution? The precaution is you must have a metal framework. If you don't have a metal framework, what will happen? 
the patient will come back every third week with a fracture of the dentures. So do not make a compromise. Have a metal framework, even if it costs about 300, 400, or even about 1,500 rupees extra, doesn't matter. Because after all, the patient is going to pay. You tell them this is what it is, and this is the most preferred preparations. So denture as an outer, <clears throat> just saying, stability retention can be controlled, easier to adjust, but indicated for coping the adjacent teeth. But the most, most important thing is if you're going to use acrylic as a secondary coping, you will get fractures. Very annoying patient will come back very often. And after all, you have collected the money once. You can't be collecting money very often. So this is a very, very dangerous situation. So thimble-shaped or a telescopic where I'm talking about the long uh, uh, domes of about 67 millimeters I already discussed needs considerable space. Retention, that means the interreclusal space should be more than 24 millimeters from ridge to ridge. You have to articulate, you have to make sure that the inter ridge is about 12 plus for 24 millimeters should be the inter. If it is less than 24 millimeters, it's going to be extremely difficult to construct. So study model, fabrication of the denture, everything is very important in this. So unless you have a good interclusal distance, do not think. Retention of trend is extremely good and all depends upon the preparation the laboratory is going to give. You have to, give, you have to instruct the patient whether you need good retention, stability, as well as the support. If you want a lesser retention, you can always ask the, ask the technician to go in for a greater degree of taper, maybe about 10 degrees. So what are the components? Inner thimble, which is cemented with the outer thimble, which is going to be on the dentures, which replaces the teeth. So this is how it's going to be. And you, uh, uh, look at this particular clinical situation. There is a huge undercut. Always there will be a huge undercut below the existing teeth. And your prosthesis does not extend here. The pink acrylic does not extend. Unless you have a metal frame, you will never be able to do this. The secondary coping is made out of metal, sometimes ceramic also, uh, like I'm going to show you in the next case. And the most, most important thing is that it does not go beyond the gingiva in the sense there is no flange in this area. So this is another case where the anterior teeth were present after a periodontal therapy. The, 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 the response was very, very unfavorable. I would have preferred to go in for splinting on the six teeth, but the patient is not able to afford. So I prepared anterior teeth and then gave an inner thimble, outer thimble with the prosthesis. Not a very, very comfortable, successful prosthesis. It was more a failure over a period of time because I used all the six teeth like a stupid fellow. Because the decision making here would have been to retain only the canines and remove all the rest of the teeth. That could have been an ideal situation rather than to keep all the six teeth and then it increases the cost, it increases the uh, maintenance. So it was, a, it was more a failure rather than a success. So if at all you have a large dentinal space, two teeth adjacent, and then these two teeth can also be because it is preferable to use the terminal teeth and then give an inner thimble and a prosthesis like this. This works absolutely fine. And in the steps in the preparation of our heavy chamfer and then metal try-in or the inner thimble try-in, jaw relationship, all these things are routine. I don't want to discuss this in detail. This is a nice clinical situation where we have utilized three teeth unilaterally. All the three teeth were present, all are periodontally sound. And after the preparation and inner thimble, I was able to get almost good parallelism and all the three had a good periodontal health also. So this is how it looked clinically and almost good gingival health. There's no problem. What is the greatest difficulty? You're able to see the bacoli will bit off ridge. This is so huge, whereas the rest of things are very, very thin. So if I have to add one more implant here, it would have been better, but I didn't want to. The patient was not willing. So I fabricated a conventional overdenture, but I incorporated three metal ceramic females or the secondary thimble with a metal extending onto the opposite side. This serviced the patient for almost about 12 years after that. I mean, all the three teeth failed and I went for an implant supportive process. That's different. But the longevity of services. So if you're going to have a look at the clinical situation, this is how it looks. Look at the prosthesis. It is exactly ending at the free gingival margin. It is not impinging. There is no blanching of the tissues. So obviously there is going to be, if I have to cover this also with a pink acrylic, I would have come across a lot of disaster because there is a rotational force. This is going to 
impinge on the free gingival margin, there is going to be destruction. So this is an ideal situation. Whenever you are planning for a telescopic, make sure the secondary is limited within the free gingival margin. This is how it clinically, the attachments. Relatively expensive, very, very relatively expensive, not only requires precision location, but there's a lot of work from, we dependent on the technician. We have to depend on the technician to a large extent. So how does it help? It helps in enhancing the retention. Since it is a stud attachment, it also helps in the anterior posterior right lateral, left lateral movement also. So it's a very, very versatile uh, uh, attachment and uh, it, it's very, very useful. It can either be an intraradicular or an extraradicular. Intraradicular is less often used than the extraradicular. So intraradicular is, is one where the attachment, the female component is in the radicular, whereas the extraradicular is going to be in the dentures. It's just the reverse of that. So attachments can be either stud, bar, or magnets. We'll be talking only about studs. So we will now discuss something about the denture movements. Any denture you place it inside the oral cavity, it moves vertically, it moves anterior posteriorly, it moves right lateral, left lateral. So, so there are six different um, uh, possible movements, prosthetic possible movements in a denture. So if you just have only one ball attachment, forget about this being an implant, if you think that it's going to be root support or implant as the case may be, there is going to be only one. What is going to happen? It will prevent vertical, since it is, doesn't have a spacer, it is going to be a rigid contact with a female. It is also going to prevent vertical. So two possible movement is going to be uh, reduced, whereas it can rotate anterior posterior, right lateral, left lateral. The same thing will also going to happen when you're going to have this. If you have two, what is this? It is going to be a typical Kennedy club or a bucket handle situation where you will expect a lot of anterior posterior movement, a limited right lateral, left lateral. So the prosthetic movement is going to be reduced. On the other hand, if you're going to have four, two anteriorly and four, two posteriorly, what could happen? If you're going to have four attached, either with the help of a bar or four ball, it is going to prevent anterior posterior movement. It is going to prevent the right lateral, left lateral. Also, it is going to, so as the abutments increases, the possible prosthetic movement is going to be reduced. If the prosthetic movements are going to be reduced, the stresses on the teeth are going to be increased. So you have to make sure that more number of teeth are incorporated whenever you want a rigid over dentures. So whenever you come across, you want to give a rigid, you must have more number of abutments. Posterior teeth should also have a, a nice attachment. And this is how this is a radicular attachment on the tooth where there is no dome. So it's a bare root with a prefabricated radicular attachments. This is how a prosthesis would look like. Would look like. So this is how an implant supported prosthesis would like. So it, it, it basically you also have a matrix in the matrix where the, 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 the female component has got a metal encapsulation and the retentive component is a resilient nylon ring. And this nylon ring can be either a cup or a ring, which can be changed very often, maybe once in a year, to enhance retention. And this comes in different uh, uh, retentive capacities, in different color-coded possibilities. So over dentures with o, easy to change, wide range of movement, low cost, different degree of retention, elimination. So this is a very classical case <clears throat> where the patient came with three teeth. I didn't want to remove all the three teeth. I removed one tooth here, which was very badly decayed. And uh, we did something for this uh, uh, as a second uh, stage. He wanted to eat. I didn't want to remove and go in for an implant supported prosthesis. I would like to do a surgery unless, unless there is an absolute essential uh, need for a surgery. I normally don't do surgeries. So I prepped the teeth after root canal treatment. Gingival health is so very good. See the chamfer, see the label reduction. I should be able to see the free gingival margin removed totally the labial surface. The undercut was also relieved to some extent and I did three castings. This picture is on the mirror with the female component, right? And this is how it looked on the model. Three individual. I could have dispensed with this, but I want to keep this for some time because there was enough gap. The patient would have been able to 
manage cleansing this area better. Look at the space available, quite large, quite large. And this is how the fit look like. And <clears throat> this is the final complete dentures of the lower. I have needed some restorations of the maxillary teeth. And this is how the lower complete denture looked. And the patient was quite comfortable. And the only disadvantage is that there is going to be an increased bulk in the area where you had teeth. So what could happen? There will be a deterioration of gingiva unless the patient is going to maintain these things. There is a bright possibility there will be an accelerated loss of gingival tissues. This is how the patient looked from extra orally. So how do I make an impression of this radicular post? I make an impression. I have to be very, very precise after a radicular preparation with the conventional procedures using gates and pieces. I also define with the, this thing I take up uh, uh, the micro brush, cut the micro tip uh, or the brush tip and also this tip and keep this ready and apply some tray adhesives, inject the light body into this thing, use a lentil or spiral and push this in and make an impression. And this is an absolute foolproof method of making a good impression for a thimble for the radicular preparations. So I will normally make a rubber impression material which is with, with, with full extensions so that I capture the whole thing. So this is how it looks. And if I don't want to do a casting, what do I do? I get prefabricated Dalbo Rotex attachments. Different companies are available. They are not expensive. Their expensive ones are also available. And this is <clears throat> from Sendrix Mado. And uh, this is a very, very, very versatile. What is the minimum requirement? Minimum requirement, the tooth must be at least about nine millimeters subcrestal because the attachment radicular portion is about seven millimeters, right? And it is this part, this part is about seven millimeters from here to here, right? So I have to essentially buy the kit and they supply the uh the the, the 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 drills also along with it this is for uh, uh, ease of understanding on a model after radicular preparations i make the dome shaped uh, surface preparations and uh, remove the gp with uh, my gates and pesos and this is the company given and till then i do till here i do this is about seven millimeters long and i go inside the full depth and stop. And I take the second drill, which is going to be the diaphragm drill, the diaphragm drill, and create a small step or a diaphragm like this. And I incorporate the whole component. Normally, we don't incorporate the whole component. This is, it's like an implant uh, support process is where this is going to be the fixture. So this component is fixed first. It has got a serration. It is not a threaded uh, uh, post. So you use, we remove the ball component and first fix only the fixture component inside and close all these gaps with composites and you can even smoothen and polish after this the ball component is screwed inside and <clears throat> you can also make an impression with an impression post which comes with an analog this is a little slightly more sophisticated attachment you make an impression and exactly like an implant uh, separate processes or uh, uh, over dentures, you make a gingival former and uh, you attach and you give, make the processes. It comes in different, the female component comes in different uh, gradations. And you fix the metal housing, Patrix, and your denture is almost ready. So now, the greatest disadvantage is you have to essentially block this area with the help of a rubber cup or rubber o-ring. Otherwise, there's going to be some problem. So a clinical case, a clinical situation where very exactly I have about two canines, a group, very clinical, very, very good situation. Label reduction of the canines or a, 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 a generous label reduction, radicular preparations. The first component is fixed and the <clears throat> ball is also fixed and the female component is fixed in the oral cavity and it is picked up in the dentures like this. The very, very versatile and, and the imaginary line joining these two is within the, within the confines or the, within the width of the labial uh, residual ridge. That is why when there is a rotation, it is not going to uh, create loss of ridge. So this is how a final process looks. 
this is how it looks in the oral cavity and easy for uh, this is whenever you are buying a post if it is post 5 size it is going this is going to be the formula gates is 6 piezo is 5 the post is 4 if you have lost the drills given by the manufacturer you can use this as a guide for preparations it's going to be there's another access post which is hardly costing it up some 700 rupees or 650 rupees also a very very versatile a box of six male and box of six females the greatest advantage is i can use it even in cases where there is going to be less amount of tooth structure do the preparations normally and i can reduce the height by cutting it from the distal end from this end or the apical end i can cut this the retention is very very good and i cement it and have the female component picked up in the dentures and this is how it looks i do the creation or the uh, uh, an opening in the dentures and then use a rubber dam or a glove a simple glove fix the female component and then place a macrolic if you don't dis do this particular process what will happen is the 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 gap between the female and the comp uh, and the male component actually will go inside it's going to be extremely difficult to remove so preferable is to go in for this kind of rubber dam or a glove and then so that it it will prevent the acrylic from flowing inside and this is a very foolproof method by which you will be able to polish all these things and you'll get a good retention and the the this third case is going to be an intra radicular logic or a zest anchor or a or or other locator kind of attachments another clinical situation and uh, the step bursts are there and you fix the female component first in the root like a locator and the male component and you pick it up in the dentures like this this is also very very versatile and it works absolutely fine in most of the situations so uh, you know coming to almost the conclusion of the presentation in the beginning when we were all doing dentistry there was only one treatment for one disease entity and uh, there are nowadays multiple possibilities for one particular situations rethinking our treatment plan should be more governed by patient's desire first ask the patient what he wants what he wants is denture which is which with he will be able to whatever the treatment that you are planning for a 25 year old man or a 30 year old man need not be the same for a 70 year old man or 80 year old man if you're going to go to an auditorium or if you're going to go to an audience uh, 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 and uh, very proudly say that i placed a uh, eight implants on a 84 year old man i don't think people will really appreciate at least i will not appreciate because for that age you don't need eight implants for that age he is not going to eat you have to put yourself in the patient situation at the age of 85 90 what is he going to eat he's going to eat a very very minimal amount of food because it is not only his oral structures but the rest of the system is also de deteriorating and it is not going to regenerate for anything uh, uh, now so you must essentially give what is apt for that particular situation taking also the need of the patient into consideration we must offer multiple options and assess patient choose the best we must also think of assessing the quality of life how far have you improved the quality of life in most of the patients who are elderly they are not uh, 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 they are not they are not very avaricious about eating they would like to have a maintenance free they would like to have uh, a surgical free treatment they would like to have a treatment which you can just fit and forget you can you can fit whenever you want a removable denture they would like to be as free as possible and as and when they like so the take home message will be avoid making a dental cripple as much as possible do not do total extraction save at least about one tooth per quadrant critically evaluate different options of treatment use clinical knowledge to render the treatment at an affordable cost most important thing is not all patients can afford remember not all patients maybe kerala patients may can afford but tamil nadu patients cannot afford so i always take into consideration in the 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 the, the, the economical aspects also render treatment that are effective and lasting in the clinical situation you i don't have patients till you go through the textbooks all the time i must also read some journals which are more clinically applicable for our situations 
it is our responsibility as, as health providers and dental educators to provide alternative masticatory apparatus to the population of our society who are dentally crippled. So remember, you are doing a great service to the society and you are absolutely accountable because the, the, the society has invested money in educating you and you are supposed to give it back to them. That's all folks. Thank you very much for a very patient listening and Jai Hind. Thank you very much. Hello, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very yeah. much for the uh, very, very you patient have, listening. We have a few questions in the chat box. I welcome Dr. Muhammad. In for, the chat box. Uh, I welcome Dr. Muhammad to handle it. How to go, how to, go to chat box? Oh, it's here. Chat box. Huh? Chat box is not here. I'll ask him to read what is Mohan. Uh, I will unmute. Mohan, can you read the chat box? I'm not able to go to the chat box. A oh, chat 17, look at that. 17 chats are there. Yeah. Please give your. Oh, oh, oh. First is no light. Okay, fine. Sir, it is me, Dr. Arita Pangaja Pandurabhan, sir. No, yes, sir. Hi. Uh, screenshot. Sir, I'll read out, sir. I'll read out. Not available. Yeah, please, please. Sir. Please, sir. Yeah. First of all, one ah. Adira Pangaj, she is told hi to you. She is your SRMC student. Yes, hello. Then, uh, doctor, uh, one doctor uh, asked about the impression, impression technique. No, no, she is all given making. one more. Please give your Mitra, suggestion about yeah, flexible that is Mitra Rajan. indications. Flexible, Mitra Rajan. Mitra yeah, Rajan. Indications okay. uh, uh, Dr. Mitra Rajan, flexible dentures are indicated only as uh, I can, or it can be used as an interim process. I cannot use them as a definitive process. If you're going to talk about uh, removable partial denture hello 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 can't hear sir can't hear sir you're able to hear me yeah 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 can't hear chalma you're able to hear me okay, now okay 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 so uh, dr mitra rajan regarding your flexible dentures flexible dentures are indicated only as interim processes they are not definitive processes because any removable partial denture should have a uh, major connector. What is the primary requisite of a major connector? First and foremost, it should be rigid. So if it is a flexible, you cannot use this as a major connector. So flexible dentures, I normally, or flexible acrylics, I normally use it as a denture-based material. It is extremely good as a denture-based material whenever there is a very severe undercut. I use that. Number two is, I use flexible dentures when I have not decided about my final restorations. So as an interim processes for a period of about three to six months, I use it. Otherwise, I will not use flexible denture as a definitive processes. The next question is, uh, Mitra Rajan, am I clear in this? So she's my uh, PG, co-PG. She's from Palani. Okay, fine. All right, sir. Sir, can you explain more about impression taking impression. bottom molding is not needed? Bottom molding is not needed. Uh, Do we need the regular bottom molding is absolutely is absolutely essential. Absolutely essential. There is absolutely no compromise at all. If uh, uh, if I can say, I normally make closed mouth impressions. Closed mouth impressions for complete dentures. I don't do open mouth impression. Make a special tray in the maxilla. If you can give me another few more minutes, Sam, I can just uh, yes. yeah, uh, sure. share my uh, share my screen and then share my screen and then show you fast. Uh, immediately, I will show you 
uh, how to make an impression for a company dentist or how I normally make an impression for a company dentist so that you can have a better end. Ah, it's your laptop, huh? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. All right. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. I don't, uh, yeah, this, I'm not using my laptop. Chalama. Um, Okay, I thought I had that also. I removed it. Stupid. I'm sorry. I'm so, but sorry. you will take regular impressions as for a complete danger, sir. In over danger as well. Uh, uh, one, one, only one, one, only one minute, only one minute, only one minute. I take uh, preliminary impressions with the party with a patti. I normally take a preliminary impression with a patti. And uh, I do a bottom molding with heavy body. And uh, after I make the bottom molding with heavy body, I use a light body for my preliminary impression. That is going to be my preliminary impression. So preliminary impression will have three steps. The first step is making a patti and cut off the borders, use a heavy body or a medium body for a bottom molding, followed by light body. So I will make a, a, a long preliminary appointment, preliminary uh, uh, impression appointment. So a little, little expensive also, but doesn't matter at all. Absolutely fine. Following that, I get my jaw relationship straight away. I get my bite blocks like this. From here, what I'll do is I'll check only my vertical dimension. After I vert, uh, check my vertical dimension, I check whether there is equation or e e you know, equilibrium of pressure on both the sides by checking with the help of a, uh, a, a cellophane strip. So I keep it in between and then remove it. If I'm able to remove both at the same force, that means there is equilibrium. Then I use this particular central bearing device. If you don't want to use this, plastic central bearing device, no problem. This is available with Vijay Dental or you can also fabricate this uh, um, by your own using a two millimeter acrylic sheet. You can buy it from the uh, hardware shop, two millimeter acrylic sheet. The measurements are given here. I can even share this particular uh, presentation to a uh, moment. I will, you can give a PDF uh, to all the people. There's no problem. Sure. I will send a PDF uh, by WhatsApp itself in the same group. Now that about one hour's time, I will send a WhatsApp of this in the same group. No problem. And uh, you can fabricate this and fix it in the bite block and make sure it does not make a contact. So the, uh, the, 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 the uh, wax is not making a contact, only the screw. The screw is also an ordinary screw, a stainless steel screw, which is hardly about three or four, I mean, maximum by about 50 or 50 paisa or 75 paisa. And this is also very, very useful. And I make a check whether Intrach. there is no wax contact. Intrach, is, intrach distance is maintained. Now, I ask the patient to tap, 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 tap. I get a centric record and I make a mark. I apply denture. Uh, I mean, I, may, I apply the tray adhesive and do a border molding, border molding with heavy body. I will never ever miss bottom molding. I will always do bottom molding. And both bottom molding at one stage and ask the patient to bite at that centric position. And I will not do all this bottom molding with the muscle trimming and all those things. I'll ask the patient to just do some lip pursuing movements like this. I'll get a good functional depth. And this is how my border molding looks. And after that, I remove all the excess and apply light body and ask the patient to bite at centric and do the same lip pursuing movements. And after it sets, the whole thing comes out at one block, like a mono block, it will comes out and look at the impression details. Excellent. Bottom molding is beautiful. And this is how an open tray and the close tray comparison, open tray and close tray comparison. What is the advantage is that it is a functional compression, you know, like you make spaces, all those things is not required. It's a functional compression impression. Maximum coverage, you'll get very, very good coverage. So I always prefer to go in for this kind of impressions because it gives me a good functional impression.
am i clear in this yes. so how expensive is that uh, tracer uh, if you are going to make it by yourself it is only 90 rupees 90 rupees i can reuse this also cold sterilization if you going to buy it from uh, say uh, uh, this guy what is his name vijay dental vijay. it is costing about 1200 rupees or something like that he will give you four different sets four sets of this and all the four sets together is 1200 rupees you can reuse this you can reuse this any number of times yeah. no problem cold sterilization okay sir. and what time at what stage you will do the pickup sir for the uh, over danger in the same impression the or over danger for the over danger no, no. different for for over dentures for over dentures i don't use this for over dentures i do only an open tray impression technique open tray yeah. impression technique in case in case i it is an uh, over completely identical situation maxilla and two over dentures the sequence is like this if i have two canines i do a root canal treatment and soon after we do the root canal treatment i do the periodontal preparations also i do a, do a good subgingival i mean good subgingival uh, cleansing and leave the patient alone for some time maybe by about 3 or 4 days later i call the patient trim the tooth 2 mm above the gingiva prepare the radicular space and make a final impression of the mandibular arch and give the upper final impression also and give it to the technician the technician will give me an upper bite trim lower bite trim and the two castings also he will give am i clear till now i yeah. cement these two these two uh, castings i cement in the tooth make a jaw relationship now i make again the border molding and the centric record and i give the impression now this pickup will not be there i have already cemented the uh, ball the casting in the tooth so i'll get only impressions fortunately this particular company namely the rain 83 has got an analog for this ball i have the analogs i fix the analogs and then the denture is processed am i clear sir yes so there is a sequence there is a sequence dr ipan sir you have any questions yeah there is in spite of giving metal framework i have come across fracture of the acrylic portion of the denture so do you recommend any specific high impact it has got nothing to do with the high impact sir this is this fracture in spite of the metal framework obviously means there is some occlusal problem and if you think that there is going to be no debonding between metal and the acrylic i am sorry we are wrong so you have to rebase or reline the dentures the acrylic part has to be converted to a fresh acrylic part maybe every third year or every fourth year don't think it is going to service you forever so impression portion micro tip okay this i will send you the micro tip explanation i will send you the presentation all by myself so don't worry i can i can i can i can do it for you no worry i can i will send all the presentations to dr mohammed Uh, you can send I'll in the group in the uh, whatsapp group, group. i'll Same send group. it in the group i'll send it in the group immediately in other about one hour's time after my lunch take, i will send it across to you take your time sir right sir so yeah. i think i have uh, i have I, i've answered and then thanks for all the greetings from old uh, students of mine and uh, i just want to say thank you again for uh, the efforts and thank personally mohammed for giving me an opportunity thank you very thank much thank you sir thank you it was Thank nostalgic you, listening to you again after 20 years thank you